we came here for a second childhood. And that is actually the most true statement that I could say is we're coming here for the second childhood. The childhood we didn't get, the, the one that was robbed from us, right? And all this work that you're doing is so that you can play. You know, all of this, this money you're making and all these people that you're helping is so you can play. It's a form of play. It's a form of kind of expressing your unique selves. It's a form of sharing your unique heart. And whatever you do that matters not at all because I've seen people who are making more of an impact by doing nothing than working their tails off in service, not really contributing to any new platform of 5D because they're stressed out and fearful and resentful that they're working so hard. Because what you put into the collective is your contribution. And I really want you to sit with that because your contribution is not what you do for humanity. It is the vibration that you put into humanity. Am I putting love in today? Or I'm putting in resentment today. Am I putting judgment in today? Because whatever you put in the cup is the focal point and the gravity, right? And the magnetic charge that is going to be coming from you, through you, and to you. Remember, it's not just what you put out. It's what you get back, right? So you'll notice that the more freedom you get to play, the more you start to witness other people who are doing it too, because your life is a reflection right? The, more, the less you judge yourself for not working your tail off that day, you know, the, the less people are going to judge you for not working, right? It's almost like the only thing that's left is the reconciliation of your own inner judgment about what you're doing with your life and what you're not doing with your life. You know, there's a form of mastery that takes over when you don't have to do anything. When you've created a reality that just supports your play or supports your creative projects or you know, you're tinking around and you're, you're working on your relationships and developing this new character within yourself of someone who isn't constantly having to survive and struggle and, you know, be completely um, disregarded by other humans for your personal belief systems, right? Because your last front, final frontier is your relationships, bottom line. That's it. That's all you've got to work on your relationships with your reflections and your relationships with your inner world. That is it. And now you have to go clean up whatever the mess is that is telling you that it's not done. I mean, as a, as a collective, we have ascended into the fifth dimension. So here on out, it's a choice. We are taking score about something you haven't done yet or the judgment still in your heart and you're holding yourself back for that. That's on you. And that's also what you're putting into the collective. You know, I'm being judged. The world is judgmental. I'm not safe, right? So you've got to start really paying attention to these metaphors that you're vibrating out and that you're witnessing back. And one of the biggest conflicts that you guys have is how other people view you. So it's like, I'm good, you know, I'm good with me and my so-and-so is good with me, but how would I feel if someone else looked at my situation through their eyes? You know, what kind of judgment would slap me back if someone looked at me through their eyes, through their wounding, through their judgment? How would I feel about that? But on the flip side, when you play it safe, you don't grow, right? So being embarrassed and humiliated is one of the biggest forms of trauma that is created in the human body. It is the thing that stops you in your tracks keeps your mouth closed, keeps you from standing in the spotlight, keeps you from developing yourself, keeps you from, you know, dressing and being and loving the way that you want to love. Because when we get embarrassed or humiliated, what the inner child says is who I am is not important. It, I am not valuable. I am not pretty. I am not talented. I am not creative. And when you when the inner child feels that way, it pulls all its energy down. So much more than physical pain, right? See, the body holds on to the memory of physical pain. The inner child holds on to the memory of emotional pain. 
okay? You know, you get hit by a car, boom, right? Ouch. The body's like, whoa, that's traumatic, right? But if there's no necessarily emotion attached to it, right? You're not the driver. You're, you're not creating the accident. You're not causing the accident. You're experiencing the accident and you don't really have any sort of emotional reaction to it. It's not going to download as a big major trauma. But you put some emotional wounding on there. It's your fault. You're driving without insurance. You were on your phone. You put some shame and guilt in there. Or you put some resentment in there from someone else not paying attention, hitting you. Now you've got physical trauma and emotional trauma. That is going to embody itself in your future choices, decisions, and attractions. It is about what's still in your heart. It's about what you still feel about the collective. It is about what you've got going on inside. Your judgment about someone else in class has nothing to do with who's raising their hand. It's about how you're reacting to, to what they're saying, right? And you're either going, oh, victim perpetrator, right? So if you're noticing that, then there's something left within you, which is why I said, please go back to where you're training, but look at it as first person, which means there is no one else in the universe but you. So if so-and-so raises their hand and you know they're being you know emotional in what they're saying and you're like, oh my gosh, right? I want you to look at that through warrior training and I want you to find the victim perpetrator energy of yourself where either you weren't allowed to raise your hand, you weren't allowed to be emotional, you weren't allowed to be whiny, you weren't allowed to ask questions, you weren't allowed to get attention. And I want you to find that and resolve it within yourself. Because where you're heading is a life without judgment. So you better start noticing what you are judging, right? And start noticing of how you feel judged, what you do that feels judged, right? Okay, I feel judged through so-and-so's eyes. You know, I feel judged through my kid's eyes. I feel judged through this eyes, you know, like, okay, let's work on that. We're going to be working through that in this new workshop. It's all through the perspective of the inner child, okay? So the inner child is the one that is ultra sensitive about how the world reacts to her, to him, all right? Not about what you're doing. It's about how you feel received through the inner child that is making your relationships shitty, okay? And how you are receiving others and how they are triggered by your behavior, even though you're being yourself. Because if you want to have amazing relationships in the future, right? And when I say amazing relationships, I mean integrated ego. Because we know that ego is a thing that destroys all relationships. It is a thing that constantly is taking out of context, monitoring, judging, opinionated, protective, unsafe, right? Without ego, we would literally be nothing but children playing on a playground. We would have absolutely no judgment with each other. You know, oh, that triggers you? Oh, okay, I love you. Let me help you through that. And the person who's saying, I feel unsafe when you say that, thank you for helping me through that. You see, it's like with the absence of ego, eliminates defense. Now, re you're really going to be studying a lot about defense in this workshop because defense is what brings your inner perpetrator out, your inner victim out. Anytime you feel the need to defend your perspective, your being, your looks, your existence, anytime the defense mechanism pops up within you, higher self goes to sleep right, or not asleep, it moves away from the frequency and ego steps in and puts like this around the child, okay? So now it's ego against ego, right? There's no, there, there's no coming to consciousness. You can spend a good six hours talking about your feelings and defending the fact that you need to be seen and heard and defending your state of being and defending the work that you've done and defending your needs 
And as long as it's met with defense, there will be no resolution. There will be no resolution. The only resolution that happens is you both get tired, you decide that you're going to disagree, or you hear the things that you want to hear finally out of someone's mouth. I hear you, I see you, I understand you, right? But if it's met with exhausted defensiveness, you'll notice that those are just words and that that resolve doesn't actually occur, okay? So there's going to be major steps that you're going to have to be working on in your personal intimate relationships this year that you can't get away from. Okay, so if you say, I want this soulmate, I want this partnership, I want this co-creation, I want this business partner, and I want it to work, you're going to have to do some major reflecting on your personal behavior in that relationship to move that old energy out. Okay, and you can't expect your partner to do this because they don't know what you know. Your job is to create your universe where they shift into a parallel reality where they act right. They aren't going to do this work the way that you're doing this work. Now you will notice that they will do their own flavor. They will do their own work, right? So just like, you know, last night, Will and I had this conversation and he has this tendency when he feels unsafe that he goes right to passive aggressive, right? When his safety issues, like when his inner child doesn't feel safe, he goes right to passive aggressive. Now, what is passive aggressive? It's like, I'm angry, but I'm going to be passive about it because I don't want to show my anger because my anger is not okay. And so I'll be passive about it. So my voice level doesn't change, but there's this edge of criticism and sarcasm that makes me feel unsafe or someone else feel unsafe, but because it's coming through like almost like a joke or an act of encouragement, then it's, it's very snake-like, very defensive energy that's coming off so-called like, oh, it's not a big deal or I'm trying to be helpful here. And really what it is, is I triggered a safety issue within him. And that's how he projects and protects his inner child from what I did, said, or was acting, right? But because I'm so aware of the passive aggressive energy, I know that he's just in protection right now and I don't take it personally, right? And say, hey, dude, you're being passive aggressive right now. I love you to death. But when you, when, you know, when you're defending your position that way, what you're doing is you're asking me to now defend me. And that's going to end in a breakup eventually. So we have two choices. We can get into how you really feel underneath the passive aggressive energy, right? And then I can lovingly, through kind holding space, assist you there. Or you can choose to not resolve that and keep that wall up, but I'm not going to deal with that wall. I want to deal with what's underneath that wall, right? And so then after sitting in that and, and being kind of non-emotional about that, you know, then he can say, yeah, this is something that has happened in the past to me a lot. You know, you're doing this right now. Um, I don't want it to be a big deal. I don't know why it's a big deal. Um, I don't, you know, I don't really want you to change who you are, but when you do this, this, and this, it triggers me, and that's my defense mechanism, right? Good. At least we're aware. Completely different conversation than what it could have been, right? Me defending my position of who I am or what I am or whatever, and and then and and then him defending that you know why he does the thing he does, and so now we're 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 defending our wounding. We're defending our, con our, our inability to be conscious of what's really going on, right? And, and one of the reasons I left my last marriage was, was um, the passive aggressive bullshit because it just, it begins to stab at you and you begin to feel worthless and your self-esteem just goes in the freaking toilet, right? So of course I'm going to attract that in my final relationship that I'm in because you're going to meet that final, you're going to meet that final dragon when you're like, you know, and what I said last night to him is, you know, I've never gotten this far with anybody. 
usually at this point, I'm like, fuck you. Have a nice life. I love you. I respect you. I'll work from the lessons that I got. I said, but I'm in un unnavigated territory right now because I'm not giving up. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say F you when it is me. So it's like every time he speaks, I'm like, okay, why would I say that right now? Where do I feel that way? And it's been a completely game changer in my relationship because my natural defensive mechanisms to protect my inner child are not being accessed because I'm I'm more working in the 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 understanding of warrior training of okay he's trying to make me feel victimized right now which means he's perpetrating me which what he's going to do is he's going to make me try to take my power back and perpetrate him that's what he wants to do because the ego is addicted to the pain and reward it's addicted it wants it wants to poke at your victim until you attack it because it wants to approve that the world is not safe and that everybody attacks you. And as long as it can keep that program going, you will never have healthy relationships. You're in the cracks and crevices now. Final frontier, relationships. It's the only thing by healing relationships that will ever create unity. Because the way things are looking, guys, I mean, 3D is going to go totally socialism. You know, they're going to have all these mandatory things and they're going to have, you know, free this and free that. And they're going to give all their power away and start over again. Right. That's where 3D is heading. Now, the entrepreneurs, the capitalists, the free thinkers, you know, the ones who are aware we have to take responsibility to clean up the crap that causes us to get codependent. Otherwise, we stay part of that problem. You guys are asking me, when is this going to be over? When is this ending? Like, how much longer do we have to do this? Ask your own universe. You're creating it. You're creating the scenario that you're looking out the window and seeing every day, whether you like it or not. If your world is not safe, you are not safe in your world. You are not safe with yourself. Okay? So if the world's becoming more safe, that is a huge marker and reflection of the work that you're doing, okay? So the relationship with yourself is the one that you haven't studied depth in depth yet, especially because most empaths were rescuers. So we know our partners in and out. We know our parents in and out. We know our families in and out. We know all their shit. We know all their chaos. We know all their troubles. And we've spent a reality working to help them see that. Now it is time, like I said, super selfish, super self-obsessed, super into yourself because you're gonna create that universe from the inside out and how you see yourself is the only reflection you're gonna get back. So how do you see you now? Why you guys love to be alone is because when you're alone, you see you through your eyes. When you're with your love, you see you through their eyes. When you're with your kids, you see you through their eyes. When you're with your parents, you see you through their eyes. They don't like that so much, right? They don't like it as much because they're looking at the you who who couldn't be what they needed. They're looking at the you that is making bad choices or has made bad choices. They're looking at the you who's, who's messed up. You don't like seeing that. So then you say, I'm introverted. You know, I just like to be alone. Bullshit. I just don't like what I see when I look through your eyes at me. Right? Look at your bank account. Look through the eyes of your bank account. If your bank account had commentary, what would it say about you? Bitch, what are you doing here? Really? Right? Like, are you kidding? Or it would be like, you got it going on. Things are flowing. Magic is happening. What would your bank account say about your behavior? What would your body say about your behavior? Would you give us some water? 
Like, come on, you know, like what would your body actually say about you? But because it is not speaking, you don't think you're not, you don't think you're not having a relationship with that, right? So I want you to kind of like think about those other relationships. Time, what would time say about you? Would time call you a victim and a perpetrator? Would your money call you a victim and a perpetrator? Would your body call you a victim perpetrator? I bet so. And that's, that's the world you're interacting with. These are the relationships that you're in. And the more you try to avoid relationships and the more you try to speak your mind in relationships, the further away you get from having a healthy relationship. You have got to learn to study them. You've got to take the heaviness out of them and turn them into an experiment. You've got to let go of that codependency and work on why you're so damn needy of things or why so-and-so is so needy of things, which is a reflection of you. You've got to find where you are not completely free in the bedroom, completely free in the mirror, completely free in your body, your work. You've got to start studying you. The university of you is what 2021 is in my classroom. I don't care about what anybody else is doing. I don't care about whatever stories you're still telling. If you're gonna go back to warrior training and find your victim perpetrator energy within you, that's the only thing I wanna hear this year. Because your mom doesn't exist, your dad doesn't exist. They're all reflections of you. So this is the year where all those stories are like, they're unimportant. But how you're still showing up because see, the thing what haunts you is how other people see you. That's your haunting, right? And then because so many people have seen you in a way that isn't really who you are, your ego becomes that counterpoint and that eyesight. And that's what the critical thinking is. That's when the scenario thinking comes in. Because now it's like, so-and-so had a problem with you. This person had a problem with you. Your ex-husband had this to say about you, blah, 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 blah. And your ego is like, okay, okay, okay. Well, then when mom leaves, I'll take that job. You know, and when you leave that husband, I'll take that job. I'll be that voice. Because all untruths are, are in a form of resistance in your body. And anything that is not true sticks to you so that you can constantly feel it. And then you can be aware of it, right? And there is nothing better than being in really uncomfortable relationships right now. If you are in a relationship right now where you're like, I am choosing to love, not him, not this, just love, you are in the perfect place to step into enlightenment. If you are still rejecting, hiding, you know, eliminating, and I, I don't mean like you're completely isolated, but if you're still rejecting that research, you're doing yourself a huge disservice, right? And remember your intimate relationships, the ones that you feel responsible, obligated, committed to, right? Those are going to be your core rooted, unconscious bullshit basically that's left, okay? And this is going to be very powerful if you can get really okay with being uncomfortable. And anytime you get so uncomfortable, shift into that observer position, right? That is kind of your eject button out of the game. Anytime you're starting to feel intoxicated by what you feel or what is happening, shift out, practice shifting out of this relationship, practice shifting out of, you know, being this body, practice shifting out of being someone's daughter and really look at it from an observer perspective. Because that's where I'm saying in warrior training, how we want to go back because warrior of time and space is the only way that you're going to tr truly be able to see your reflections without being in a state of judgment about it. Like, hmm, okay, my daughter just said this to me, it hurts, right? Let me back up, let me back up. That's not my daughter, that's not me. 
what's really happening here? There's a conflict. There's a disagreement. You know, that this person's having this belief system. I'm having this belief system. You know, I feel much more aware than she, than I see that she is, right? So what is coming up within me about that? Then you become the, the scientist of self. And now there's no longer a, a conflict with the daughter. There's just really uncomfortable traumatic energy that has been perpetrated and victimized and basically perpetuated, right? Over and over again, expecting a different result, having different arguments disguised as the same problems are not gonna get you anywhere. And the outside will not change until you change. Nothing outside of you is gonna change. The government, nothing, nothing. So if you start to notice that you're not even noticing the government anymore and you're starting to self-govern and money's coming from places and you know, you're not having to do certain things that other people are having to do and you're engaging in really healthy relationships, guess what? You're in it, you're not of it, right? You're, you're still surrounded there, but you're not having a, a completely different experience. It's almost like a king and queen up in their castle is having a very different experience than what the peasants down below are having. So I want you to kind of look at that vibration as far as, well, am I still gonna be in 3D? Well, is a king and queen technically in 3D or do they create their own reality? The peasants get the overflow of the higher vibrational reality that gets drilled down. So do you wanna be the king and queen vibration or do you wanna be the peasant? Because that's really where we're at because we're playing chess, okay? The biggest traumatizing experience that we have is looking at other people through our eyes of judgment and reciprocating that back, right? looking through other people's eyes at you. Looking through the eyes of judgment and looking through the eyes of judgment coming back at you is what actually destroys relationships, okay? So we, we have to understand that from the inner child's perspective, how much that hurts, right? Ego is like, defend, defend, you know, F you. The inner child is like, it hurts me when you say that, right? Very different vibration, but, if we're gonna get really vulnerable, which is really where our true strength is, we're going to have to learn to have conversations differently and conversations with ourselves differently, okay? So you can see how important this relationship is for you to resolve this year because you'll always make excuses, you're sabotage, or you'll feel unmotivated to put yourself out there. Because remember, you're, you're in warrior training, you're fear personality. It doesn't show up like fear, guys. It shows up like procrastination. It shows up like resentment. It shows up like lack of motivation. It shows up like, you know, like you're too busy. It shows up like you, you don't really have feel like you have anything to say. Fear, 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 fear. Study your fear personalities. Watch how you are secretly afraid of losing people and therefore you are quick to leave. Study your behavior quantumly, right? And watch how your inner child actually feels about someone saying something versus how your ego feels about how someone says something. So someone makes fun of me, right? My ego is quick to have an opinion about it. And notice anger is fear's bodyguard or a grief's bodyguard, right? So then my inner child's like, oh man, they're making fun of me, right? So then I'm like, inner child, do you care? No, we don't care. We got these giant braces on with all this equipment for the last six weeks. You're gonna look funny. You know, it's gonna look weird. So what? It doesn't bother me because I don't have a problem with me. But I did for a really long time. And I just happen to keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up till you just, it's almost like you just get so, you just keep doing it so many times that you just don't care anymore. That's their issue. And the more you resolve your inner child's perspective of itself, the less you even notice what people say about you. You know, I've had three people defriend me, like unfriend me in the last like couple of months that were literally like been with me since Tika, since the very beginning. You know, not like close friends, but you know, like associates, considered them wonderful people. 
And it was funny because like when I went to, oh, I haven't, I haven't seen what so-and-so is doing in a while. Let me go check up on her, you know? Disappeared, like blocked, like I can't even find them. So I know they blocked me. And I'm thinking, what did I trigger within them to make that like that perpetrator stand out? What what action did I take? What did I say that made their demons uncomfortable? Right? And and then how do I feel about that? Mm-hmm. My job is to fucking trigger you. I don't care. You know, if you don't have to see me every day, good. Don't deal with it yet. Because you're just going to manifest another me somewhere else. But you know what I mean? It's like those are the things that that you're that we're working on this year is our is we're gonna have to get in touch of how much our feelings are actually hurt. All of your aggressive behavior, all of your strength, all of your, you know, drive is usually covering up hurt. And that's really where I want us to study the year is the hurt. Because the expression of the inner child is the divine miracle. And if you truly want to manifest huge opportunities and huge, you know, huge client base and huge um, amazing relationships and unity projects and global ventures, do you really think that your ego is going to let you create that if your inner child has been hurt all the time by people? Like, no, because it's just more opportunity for someone to hurt you. It's just more opportunity for someone to challenge you. Just more opportunity for someone to make fun of you. Your ego will literally sabotage all of your efforts, if not half of them, to protect the inner child. Right? So that's why this new workshop is all from the inner child's expression. You know, it's like the idea of, like I told you guys before, like Luke wanted to get a red mohawk. And from that inner child's perspective, the metaphor is because I want to appear strong and tough because I'm getting bullied at school. So where are you wearing a red mohawk? Right? Maybe it's not leaving your house. Maybe it's, you know, cutting people out of your life. Maybe it's your, your, you know, your sarcasm that you use. Maybe it's your fine wit. Maybe it's your intelligence. Maybe you're using your intelligence as your red mohawk, right? Because if I'm super intelligent, then nobody will know that I'm insecure, okay? So it's like, that's why I said, it's like, what is the thing you kind of pride yourself on, like as your personality trait? Like, well, I'm really smart or, you know, I'm really efficient or really strong. Okay, that is your red mohawk. Because the inner child is none of those things. The inner child is a messy masterpiece of creation. High, low, uncertain, certain. Confident without needing value. Right? Doing nothing and feeling worthy. You know, think about what a king and a queen do all day compared to a peasant. A peasant gets up when the sun rises and works all day on the farm, basically just doing enough before it closes its eyes to survive the day. Its life is always challenged by, you know, uh, disease and famine and rape and all of those things that a peasant has to deal with on a daily basis. And a king and a queen spend four or five hours getting dressed, right, by somebody else while somebody else is preparing their food while somebody else comes in to entertain them, while somebody else is, you know what I mean? So it's like, if you look at the metaphor of, of enlightenment, you know, which perspective would you like to be? Because really at this point, it's a choice. And that king and queen feel worthy without doing any of that stuff that the peasant does all day. They're not earning their keep. They're not working a hard day's labor. They're literally sitting up there deciding how they want the world to run, deciding, and then facilitating it out because you are literally royal energy. This, this whole kind of second coming of Christ that you have in your body is all royal. You, you didn't come. Yeah, you may have spent lifetimes as a peasant, 
to download the experience, but that's not who your soul resonates with, right? And so until you can get to that place within your reality where you can have that feeling, you're not gonna feel complete, right? Because a king and queen in the vibration of love could, could really create a lot of magic for those who don't have the vibrational awareness. Like I could even make that peasant's life amazing or I could make that peasant's life help. That's what kind of power you have in your vibration. Okay, so let me go through the notes. The new workshop starts on the 23rd. It will be eight weeks. It'll take us right into the Valentine's Day energy. Uh, we'll be doing two new forms of quantum healing in it that you guys can use in your own. Our bodies will be in a position where if they are taken care of with love and kindness, that they will fully resurrect into the God state, right? Talk about royal energy. As long as you are having that relationship with yourself that can accommodate that, right? If you're self-abusing, if you're self-neglecting, if you're insecure, that's the vibration of a peasant. So you're gonna have access to this new energy. And yes, you're going to witness a lot of loss around you. You're going to witness a lot of chaos around you. You're going to watch a lot of destruction. You're going to have to make choices on what you allow to let go. You're going to have to make choices on staying and being love rather than leaving this time. You know, are you willing to stick it out with yourself? Because every time you leave an intimate relationship, all you're doing is abandoning a part of yourself that you will meet again three to six months. So might as well stick it out with your kids, with your spouse, with your mom, right? Now I felt when, with for me, I had to abandon certain relationships. I had to, because I had no training on any of this. My life experience gave me the training. Now who I am today, I wouldn't leave anybody ever because I would know that if they leave my reality, then that is them saying they don't wanna work on themselves through me and that's their choice, but that's not me running away, right? So creating peace is the name of the game. Not, not crazy love, you don't need crazy love, you want peace. That is the frequency that you're looking for in your intimate relationship not expansion, not creation, peace, okay? If you can attain peace in these intimate relationships, you have come home to yourself, right? And peace doesn't even mean you like the person. It just means you're at peace. You see the difference? I'm not asking you to fall in love with this. I'm saying find peace within it. Like, you know, my mom and I, we talk, should we hang out? We exchange all kinds of a relationship now. It is not love. It is not like, I love her. It is peace. We have peace with each other. I'm good with that. Right? Same with Luke's dad. Peace. No love. I don't want to hang out with you, but I am so peaceful with who you are and how it and how I see myself through your eyes. Right? Does this make sense? So building up to this new energy is a really good idea that you let go of whatever needs to let go of that is no longer part of your work, but don't let go of that triggery stuff right now. Don't let go of it. I'm not saying focus on it. I'm saying bring it into you instead of resisting it and like start studying the way that you see you through their eyes right? Then notice how you're in judgment of them through your eyes. Like, what do you judge about them, right? It's some sort of hidden insecurity about you, because it's like what I said in Second Sunday, you know, you really want to know your vibration, you get on a dating app, and, and, you know, like, and look at someone really super attractive and successful, and watch your insecurities pop up, and then look at someone very inferior and ugly, and watch your arrogance pop up. You will find your trigger points, right? But what we're so, do, we're so used to doing is being so numb in our relationships that we don't even really notice what bothers us until we get triggered, 
right? And the first thing that ego wants to do is blame and build a wall. Blame, build a wall. That's the ego's answer to everything. Now look at the state of the world. Look at the government. Look at the society that we live in. It's blame and walls. It's the fragment creation of our own inner ego. 